questions for players first? Raise your hand, we'll get back to you and then we'll finish with Coach Moldy. Don't say nothing, Coach. No. <laughs> happy, happy, happy. Here, um, I guess for both of y'all. I guess for both of y'all, just what was today like, um, the um, ceremony and everything, uh, just how it all played out? I mean, it feels great. I mean, long four years. Um, it's crazy being two years at Maryland and then coming here and being able to just keep extending my career and having a great time here. It's It's been crazy and amazing, and the fan base has been crazy. And, of course, you know I have an option to come back. So just being able to be here and be in the moment and enjoy it and play in a great team like Kentucky that can beat you on every, any given night was good for us tonight. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I just appreciate the fans. They came out and made it a special night, packed the arena, our teammates, the managers, the coaches, everyone made it a very, a very special night that, um, you know, we'll remember for the rest of our lives. So very appreciative. Uh, for Andrew, uh, how's it been having Shaq uh, as like your support system over the past two seasons and like walking you out tonight um, that had like a special impact on you? Yeah, it's been great. I mean, who's better than a person like Shaq? I mean, he's very he's really smart, not just on the basketball court, but just in life. He has his doctorate, so he's educated me on a lot of things outside of basketball. But being able to have somebody like that um, has been a great inspiration for me. And, of course, enjoying a moment like this with him and the rest of my family was, was fun tonight. Uh, Angel and then Haley, what is it like to hear one more year, <laughs> one more year from it the crowd? It puts a lot of pressure on you, of course. I mean... The, f the fan base here is amazing, and of course, I probably will never see anything like this again. So, of course, you, you think about that when you're trying to make a decision because I do love LSU and I love everything here and the support here. They've made me who I am, um, the Bayou Barbie because of LSU. So, it, it's, it's, it's a lot of pressure, of course, but I'm just trying to focus on the now and just enjoying the moment. Yeah, um, you know, obviously it makes you feel good that the fans, you know, want you back so bad and that this community really cherishes us. And just the support for women's basketball in Baton Rouge by itself is just, it's really a special thing. So, yeah, I mean, you can't say much. You just I just love that the fans, you know, want us here so bad. For, for both Angel and Haley, you know, there's a lot of talk about the decisions that y'all will have to make. Um, are y'all either y'all leaning in a certain direction, or what factors are you thinking about um, either way now? You know, as we head into the postseason. I'm focused on the now. Um, going into the SEC tournament is my focus, and I won't make a decision until after my last game. Yeah, same with me. I'm I'm living in the present right now. I'm playing college basketball. So, you know, I'm not even thinking about anything besides trying to win a national championship this year. Angel, um, w when you came here, obviously you had dreams and aspirations, but you've been a, a, a transformational player. I mean, obviously the, you've advanced the program a lot. I mean, I know you're in the middle of it. Have, have you ever had any time to think about that? Was, was this in any way a goal or is this – is this when you see the crowds and see the, you know, the 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 support that has been for women's basketball and the interest? Is that something that was beyond anything you imagined when you came here? Um, I knew coming here the fan base. I already knew the fan base was great because of Kim Mulkey, her coming here and they followed her from Baylor and understanding what she was coming to do for this program. Of course, coming here, um, I didn't know if I was going to win a national championship. That wasn't really in the thought. I just wanted to come here for a fresh start, um, come help Coach Mulkey, and she helped me with my game and then join amazing teammates and a, a different kind of culture in the SEC. So I feel like everything just came together all at the right time. No, I didn't write down, like, I want this, 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 and this. But luckily, and luckily, like, God put me in a place where everything just came as a blessing, and I just can't think. LSU enough for just being able to put me in a position like that where not having a lot of expectations. Angel, you guys came out strong and then there was a bit of a lull. You couldn't really get anything going. Do you think that maybe Michaela being out and you guys trying to, you know, figure it out together without her maybe was a, a factor in that? Um, of course, it's an adjustment when you're start a starting guard. I mean, she is also a freshman, but she does do a lot of things for us. Um, we shouldn't have laid down to Kentucky, and I think we laid down and got complacent and let the the crowd and everything going on 
not really have us focused on the main thing. Um, we did start out great, but Kentucky's a team that they can go on runs and they have scrappy guards and new two of my colleagues from Baltimore playing against them. They want to beat me. So just understanding what this game meant to them, it, it seemed at one point it meant more to them than it did us. Then we changed it around. Angel, for you, um, I know the season's not over and the decision has not been made, but what do you hope is the biggest takeaway for the folks that come and watch you guys play night in, night out, the, the supporters behind the scenes? Like, What do you hope is the biggest thing that people take away from your time in an LSU uniform? Me personally? Um, well, I want to leave my legacy as somebody that just – was just unapologetically me. Um, being able to just come in every day and just be happy and work hard and do whatever it takes to win. I mean, I feel like I made a lot of sacrifices coming here and not really knowing what it was going to be like and taking a step of faith and understanding and letting other players know, like, taking that step of faith is hard, but you, you can do it and look how it changes your life. And look at how my life has changed within a year and a half. It's, it's crazy. And I'm not telling everybody to just get up and transfer, but I'm just saying, like, playing under Coach Mulkey and this amazing program, I just want people to know, like, you can come here and be you. Like, you don't have to step, you don't have to sit into a box and just play this kind of game or do this these certain things. Like, on and off the court, I was able to grow my own person and be who I am. So that's what I just want to leave my legacy as. Haley, a similar question for you. How, how do you think you'll look back at, at this season? What are the prevailing emotions that you think you'll have, and how would you describe describe overall the, the first run and in your year in Baton Rouge? I mean, hopefully the best moments are waiting for us, yet to happen um, at the end of the season. But, no, I think, you know, it's been a great year for, for growth and just trying to get better as a, as a person, as a player, as a student. You know, doing the NBA program and playing basketball at the same time has been challenging for me. So um, just random things that, you know, I didn't expect to be a factor. Um, coming here, but I, yeah, you know, mostly I'm just, I'm happy with the relationships I've made um, with staff, with my teammates, with students around campus. Um, yeah, so I mean, obviously what I'm going to remember at the end of the day is the people that I met here. Hi, um, for Angel and Haley too, uh, you know, obviously a year of um, adjustment for both of you, the influx of some high profile talent. Um, that you had to learn to play with, and then of course a new team for Haley. How would you say your perform? Or could you point to examples in this game of where your adjustment is heading into the postseason, and how comfortable you guys are um, now with the current makeup of the roster? Um, well, you guys know our roster. We play what seven to eight players s sometimes, and. Being able to be a leader on this team, I got to be in 40-minute shape. And I think that's something that I've adjusted to. And just being able to look back at earlier games in the SEC, I feel like I've been in a better place right now, being, being able to be in shape, um, being able to play, sit down and get in a stance and play defense and be there for my teammates. I can't look at it as my player only scored this amount of points. I got to look at it as a team effort and go around and look at the whole thing in that perspective. So I think that's where our team is at right now, being able to play together, play team defense, and then offense, that, that's going to come. We got the talent for that. Yeah, I mean, I would agree. I think uh, I think today <laughs> a little bit was we, we were getting tired, which is, you know, on us as players. We have to be in shape coming into the game. But then I think, you know, like you said, like the team chemistry, we, we still have people who are finding certain flows at certain parts of the game. Um, I know for me, you know, I only had one rebound. Um, and like some games I have seven, some games I have one, like it's just a little up and down in that area. And I think if I can, you know, we've been talking the film, if, if I can get around three a game for the rest of this postseason, I think that that'll help a lot with taking the load off the bigs of, of having to, to carry that load in the rebounding end. So there's certain things like that where it's just little parts of the game that I think if we can get some consistency from everybody, uh, it'll play in our favor in the end. Thank you. Thank you. All right, questions for Coach Mulkey. Uh, 
Coach, uh, real quick, do you expect to see Michaela in the SEC tournament? Michaela can play. Yeah. I could have played her today. She played in the Georgia game. Michaela and Haley both have been in and out of the boot all year because they deal with plantar fasciitis and their feet just hurt. So after the Georgia game, she just said it just kind of tender. So I, I'm shut her down. <laughs> I don't care if she plays in the SEC tournament or not, put her in a boot. Because what you don't want to have happen is you don't want the wear and tear of something turn into something that's not serious at all. Um, so she's going to be prepared to, to, you know, do it. Today she knew I wasn't going to play her regardless, but she'll be in uniform and all that. But uh, you got three weeks, baby, if that foot's tender uh, anywhere, put a boot on it. And overall, what were you thinking, you know, listening to Angel and listening to Haley talk? You know, what, what emotions are going through you right now listening to them? Um, I hope that they've answered the questions y'all keep asking me. So don't ask me about if they're coming back or not, right? As you can see, they're focused on basketball and focused on their team. Um, I feel very lucky. I feel very blessed. They chose to come to LSU uh, when we didn't – Angel – in particular, chose to come when we didn't have anything to sell other than myself. Uh, we didn't have national championship or anything like that. Now, we had history to sell in women's basketball back in the Simone days and Sylvia days. Um, and I'll say it again, Angel Reese and what she did with her teammates in one year, that's, that's pretty remarkable. And then Haley, um, the word that comes to mind for me is she. These young people, they're 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 brought up in a generation where it's what have you done for me lately, and it's a very selfish generation. And that's my opinion. And she left a program that's a very good program because there was something in her game she was missing out on. She'd graduated, and I think that she. Um, maybe just saw something um, away from the individual stats, the number of shots taken, and maybe there was a shallowness to this, this doesn't really matter at the end of the day, how many shots you take and how many points you score. And she joined us and she wanted to learn the point guard position and she wanted to play for a national championship. And um, same thing with Morrow. Uh, they just wanted to play with good players, great players, and, and try to win a championship. And that just always will stand out to me about Haley and, um, and Morrow. Right here, Coach. Um, Flaugh Johnson really got it going in the third quarter. She scored 11 of her 21 points. Also recorded three steals, which really allowed you guys to get some easy fast break points and really blow the game open. What do you think really prompted that shift? Um, I think uh, Flaugé's asked us to defend the better player on the opposing team, and I think she gets caught up sometimes um, maybe getting down on herself if she gave up a shot or she didn't feel like she did good defensively, and I think she allows it to affect her play. Secondly, I think she only had four shot attempts. So it's kind of hard to get untracked if you've only got had four shot attempts. And I would have to look at the film to see why she only had four. But my answer without looking at film is, well, if you only had four, I know we missed a lot of shots. Go in there and get some offensive boards, and then you can get some more shots. I always tell them that. If you don't feel like you've gotten enough touches or attempts, go rebound the ball. And... Um, She's just grown so much in her game. There's, there's, she is everything you want to show young people about how much you can improve from your freshman year to your sophomore year. I think that's the jump that is so big uh, in, in college sports, is from your freshman year, whether you redshirted in football or whatever it is, it's the jump of improvement that you make from your first year in college to your second year. They get used to time management. They get used to eating. They get used to all the things that were foreign to them when they became, when they were a freshman. Uh, Coach, what has uh, Shaq's involvement meant to the program as a fan and as a supporter? Certainly you're earning lots of fans on your own, but he obviously brings some more to the table. Well, 
Angel, I guess in a lot of ways, I don't know. Shaq may have followed us before Angel. I don't really know, but I think it's it's obviously her her um, her connection with Shaq. I didn't know he was here, and I just thought, my, that's a big band walking out. And then I saw it was Shaq. Um, but he's always very kind to me. He's very just attentive. You know, he wanted to hug me and touch me and all that in the halftime, and I'm not real happy at that moment. We're only up six, but that's Shaq. Um, I don't think it's um, anything more than he's a basketball guy. He has a daughter that's going to go play at the University of Florida. He had another daughter that I think played here before I got here. Uh, he has a son that played. You know, he's a basketball person, and uh, this is his school. LSU is Shaq's school. And so I think he just loves everything about Baton Rouge and, and, and LSU. And I'm speaking not ever having that kind of conversation with Shaq. He is a wonderful ambassador for all of us. Hey, Kim, I got two for you. Uh, how much this, this fan base has, has gravitated and, and galvanized itself toward Angel? Uh, just how, how special has that been for you as, as her coach? To, to see that the fans really uh, just embrace her like they have the last couple of years. And then I also, too, just wanted to get your thoughts on your, your bobblehead, if you've seen it. Um, I think <sighs> times are different now. What we are witnessing with these fans, and not just in the PMAC, but on the road, I've never seen anything like it, guys. And I, this isn't my first rodeo. I won three championships at Baylor. I've never, I've had a 40 and 0. I've never seen anything like this. So what's different? So I keep asking myself that question, and I think what's different is they're very, very talented. They're very entertaining. They're very accessible. They have unbelievable personalities, and they let it show. And if you combine all of that with a tough woman, that kind of intrigues people. That you can be beautiful, you can be talented, you can be tough, you can be you, and it reaches people that may have never had an interest in women's basketball before. I think it's a lot of that. And, of course, Angel brings that to the court. Uh, Flage, I mean, what a story that is. She stays up all night, and she, she raps and does all that, and then she comes to practice, and she has to go to school. Um, that's a story in itself. Um, the bobblehead, I didn't know we had a bobblehead until Friday. I've learned that I am on a need-to-know basis. I didn't know we had the Kim Mulkey dress alike. I didn't know we had a bobblehead until they asked me to open it. When I saw it, I said, well, okay. I don't look like Bon Jovi. You know, one of them they did at Baylor, I look like Bon Jovi, uh, which is okay too, but um, I'm... I would rather it be for the kids. I would rather it not have been on senior night. They know if I had known about it, I would have said no. Um, but I also am not upset about it because I understand what we're doing, and that probably brought more people to the PMAC, like these jackets. I wouldn't go pay for all this stuff, but I wear it. So we've all in some way kind of contributed to this craziness we're seeing with fans. Coach, you talked about you got a little heated there at halftime. Your girls, Angel said it, complacency. I know you're not going to tell us what you said at half, but what do you think, where do you think that came from and what kind of snapped them out of it, should I say? Let me make it clear. This is not any reflection of Kentucky or Kyra Elsie. I love that woman. She learned from Pat Summit. She played for Pat Summit. She's everything that's good 
about doing things the right way. But I felt like we played the entire game like we could not be beat. And I don't like coaching kids like that. And I felt like that's how we played today. We get offensive boards and we kicking out for 40 footers. We get another board and we kicking it out here, you know. But that's what they see, right? That's what they see in the pros. Um, so yeah, that's why the game, you go up 20, you get that, you go up, it goes back and forth. That's, that kind of basketball will get you beat down the stretch. Uh, j just to piggyback on that, you play without Michaela, you win by 21, but yet you're gonna look at the film and probably see some things you don't like over stretches, yes. right? And, and, I just, and then to reflect too, you've, you played 30 games, you won 26, despite a lot of talk about repeating and drama and whatever. How do you feel about overall where you're oh, at right I, now? Oh, I think we're right where we need to be. We've improved defensively. Um, we, are, we know a little bit more about each other now uh, than we did months ago. Um, I think we have a hunger in that locker room still. There's a lot that don't have a ring. Um, I think we have an opportunity to do some good things here in the SEC tournament. And if we don't, it's not the end of the season. The most important is after the SEC tournament. You know, I've never been a big proponent of, SC of conference tournaments anyway. I, I don't know. I guess we play it for money. I don't know why we play them. Um, how many Cinderella's do you ever really have in women's basketball? But we'll play it and we'll play to win. Got time for a couple more in here. Yeah, Kim, exactly what were you thinking on your early exit as you first half when you kind of left early, not very happy. What were you Went thinking? Went to get the uh, flowers for the presentations. Like, what are you going to do in six, six seconds that's not going to make me mad, so go get a flower. You know, flowers make women feel good. Did so, you know that? Well, I knew that. Okay. So that's why you went and got you went. There's a There's a song, and remember this, because I'm not being funny here. Bring my flowers now while I'm living. Go listen to it. Old Tanya Tucker sings probably the best version. Bring my flowers now while I'm living. And I mean that. Um, I just went out there to see if they had it all set up for it to go, and I turned back around and met them at half court. Can we play better games than maybe some of them we've played? Sure, sure. You're always you're you're always looking for that national championship game we played last year, right? You're always looking for that. I said last year when we won that national championship, I don't know if we could play any better than we did, if we could shoot it any better than we did. Um, but I know this: it's March Madness now. You make sure that you um, rest them enough and you make sure you stay sharp on the floor you make sure you rest uh, any aches and pains that's why I did it with Michaela. I was like uh -uh. and you know she wanted to play you know I wanted her to play but I'm like no somebody step on your foot somebody do no we're not doing any of that today and the next three games are not more important than the NCAA playoffs thank you guys Hopefully we good first I appreciate how you refer back to song lyrics from time to time to uh underline your uh, life lessons there. Um, so just this building, uh, named after Pete Maravich, today's the first day in 54 years. He's not the, uh, the all-time scorer in NCAA history. I just, I just want to get your thoughts on, uh, on that change. I'm going to get long-winded here, OK? Pete Maravich could do things with a basketball that I had never seen done in my life. Who can go behind your back, between your legs? And, and he, he just could see things. He was ahead of his time. Um, the movie, y'all see his movie, you know, back in the day? That thing was, a lot of it was filmed in Hammond and Ponchatoula. So I, I was just glued to all the videos and the things that he did. I don't look at comparing apples to oranges. What Clark has done is unbelievable, and her name will be right up there at the top. But he played 
over here with no three point shot, no three point line, three years. And I don't think we need to make too much of, oh, she passed him because he's a man. Or, you know, she's got, she's, she's who she is. And that's awesome. And Lord knows when I played against her, I was like, are you kidding me? What a generational talent. But I don't look at it like that. I look at it like this, two separate things right there. We good? All right.